the covenant. We have some special lingo for this week's lesson. And I suppose that God has made numerous covenants with promises throughout human history with different people, but few of them are being recorded. Mm -hmm. So in this lesson, we browse shortly to each one of them. We're talking about multiple, but basically it's the same agreement to enter in an undeserving relationship mm -hmm. in which f by grace and from love, we are being saved and restored. In this week's lesson, we are looking through the covenants that God made with Noah, then Abraham, Israel at Sinai, then David, and the new covenant that we see in Jeremiah. Back to the beginning, the rainbow after the flood. For the past, what, 6,000 years, humankind has been pretty safe and secured mm -hmm. in one big promise. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And we can say with confidence, God stood faithful in His promise, unconditionally. Mm. And nothing was required from the other side. It was one-sided promise, and it was made for all humanity. And things get much more personal when God establishes a covenant between Him and Abraham. Important promises are made on God's side, but also strong and willing faith is required from Abraham to obey God's instructions so that he can claim those promises. His faith was his righteousness. Faith and obedience, there's some good point there. This covenant was for the descendants of Abraham, and we are such through Jesus. Now, the covenant at Sinai, a solemn moment when Israel received something personal from God, an expression of his character, and they committed to walk together. A word has no power in itself, or a message has no power in itself, but start believing a word, or a message, or even a rumor, and our life takes a course we never expected it to go. The Hebrew people heard and believed what they heard from Moses, and in result, they promised that they will do everything that the Lord says. Mm. We also see here the danger when we take things in our own hands and try to enforce our interpretations of the law and miss the essence of it. And now we come to a point in the lesson that sounds sometimes so familiar, but at the same time, it's so mysterious. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, just before waving goodbye to those who were exiled in Babylon, he said that God does not need a priest or a temple, but he wants them to worship with what he has written in their hearts and in their minds. Reality switches on, symbols and shadows fade away. Mm. It's a promise and hope for the restoration and return from exile, but even more, it's a promise for our restoration and return as humanity. And I'm asking myself the question, how is it possible that I am living today not in shadows, not in symbols, but in the reality? Mm. Jesus' life and sacrifice somehow makes it possible, uh, unlocks the locks, opens the possibilities. Aren't we blessed with such an experience in our faith? It's impossible to grasp what is happening in the process of our redemption, but we can feel and understand enough to realize that we have a huge friend in a high place. And that for this relationship to work, we have to grow in his values, because on our own, we break everything. What is my covenant with God?